What he represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father. Welcome back to day three of the 21 Convention Special Patriarch Edition 2019 of Orlando, Florida. Our first presentation of this day, day three, is actually a special presentation by two speakers. It's going to be Elliot Hulse and his father. I had the uh, very fortunate experience, very lucky to go to Elliot's 40th birthday party a few weeks ago in St. Pete, Florida. I got to meet his dad right away. I was like, this has got to be Elliot's dad. Of course it was. The guy was awesome. I think I told him right away that his son was speaking at my conference in a few weeks on fatherhood. He suggested uh, very quickly that he should give a speech, and I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. I didn't know if he was serious or not, but as it turned out, he was. I talked with Elliot about it. We set it up. And you guys are about to see that uh, interview between Elliot and his father go down. I'm very excited for it. And first up, you're going to have Elliot and his father. So without further ado, let me welcome Elliot Hulse back to the stage. Thanks, Elliot. There you go. <clears throat> Morning, gentlemen. So one of the first questions that a man is met with is, who is your father? At least we see this in many traditions. Who is your father? That's why we get our father's last name. Because there's something of the pattern of the man from which you come in that name. Who is your father? And so I am very blessed to have a very strong father, a father whose name I can be proud of and a father who has a very unique background. He wasn't raised in the same kind of culture that we were. My father is from the jungle, if you will. My, father, my father's from Belize. And he literally, literally grew up without wearing shoes, climbing trees, swinging from branches, riding horses bareback. You grew up wild, he'll tell you. And it is from that wild man's seed and character that you see me. He came to America when he was, you know, maybe same age as you guys as young men, you know, and, uh, and married another Belizean woman and raised us in our culture for what you take of it. Uh, but with many of the jungle, law of the jungle attitudes and behaviors and stances and admonitions. So I have a unique upbringing in that it was in America, but with a, a very primal uh, veneer. And so he's got a lot of unique ideas, a lot of unique experiences, very different than many of my friend's fathers. And so I thought it would be amazing for us here on this Sunday morning to gather some wisdom, old school wisdom, alpha male from the jungle wisdom that my father has to offer. And so without further ado, I would like to introduce to you my father, Edmund Hulse. <clears throat> Hi guys, good morning. <laughs> yeah, why don't you? You can have a seat right chair, here. Chair, chair. Over there. Chair, good. All right, guys. <laughs> so, this is this is my father, and you see he's sitting up on his high horse behind you there too. Yeah. Which is perfect, because he see loves that to face. Do That's not a normal face. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, one of the things that I, I came to recognize very recently about my father, especially as I've become involved with you guys in the manosphere, is that he is the alpha male that we we're always talking about. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that when I was a kid growing up. In fact, I kind of resented him because I grew up in a world where they turn the children against the father and the parents. This is what the media and the schools does. My father was very strong. And as a result, I wanted to fight back. And it wasn't until I was much older, had my own children, that I began to realize that my father had it right the entire time. 
and that it was great, and it is great to come from a strong, a home with a strong alpha male leader. So I'm gonna ask some questions here, very basic questions, um, because my dad's answers usually aren't basic, so it's a great way to get the ball rolling here. And so my very first question for you, Dad, is if you can offer to the guys what or why you think family is important. Family is important because um, it's strength, it's power. So without a strong family, you're nothing. So to become a strong family, you gotta have a lot of love too and respect for your kids, your spouse, you know? So that it's very important to have. If you don't have respect for yourself and love for yourself, your family becomes weak. So that's the first thing that I think is very important to have a real strong family, a good family. And it's important to have family that, uh, that can uh, support you in whatever you do and respect you, you know. So that's one of the main things to have a strong family, you know. Um, to have strong kids, you know. So if you have a weak family, you'll have weak kids. And you want your kids to be strong, you know. So that's basically how I feel about having a, it's important to have a, fam a good family. Do you, you think know? it's important for, <clears throat> for people to have families? Yes, it's important to have family. You gotta have family because uh, what's life without a family? What are you living for? What are you existing for? You know, but not just to have family because you want to have a family. It's a reason to have a family. And um, the reason to have a family is to make the world a better place. You know, Fam we are the world, you know. So there's a lot of, you know, there's so many things in my mind that I want to say here but um, I know I have limited time because I could go on forever uh, as far as family concern, mm -hmm. you know? So. so, how is the world a better place when we have strong families? Because you respect each other as, uh, and we give a lot of love to the world, you know? And, um, that's the only way you're gonna have a good family, you know, is with love. Because love is powerful. Without love, you have nothing, you know? So, family needs love. And what do you mean by love? Love is mean that you can, you'll do anything for your family. You understand? Know you will die for your family, you know? Would you all die for your family? Who would die for their family in here? Good. So if you don't have love, how would you die for someone? You know what I'm saying? It's the love that gives you that strength to do whatever you want to do, you know? So if you, um, you know, I'm trying to find words for you guys here because it's a lot involved when it comes to a strong family. First, the way I look at it is this. First, you gotta start with you. You gotta look at yourself and respect yourself. You know? And by you respecting yourself, your kid will respect you. You gotta give your kids like energy, strong energy. And the only way you're gonna do that is by you respecting you, who you are. You know, it's not material stuff that make you strong. It's the love that makes you strong and respect for each other. You know, everyone, you know, it's not only, if we're talking about family right now, but I'm talking people around you. We're all family, yeah. 
So if we don't respect each other, how can we do good for each other? You know, that's the main thing is, you know, is main love, you know. So, and so what, this is, we're calling this patriarch mass this morning. And so it's, it's a reference to the father above also. Right. And so what do you think, what role does the almighty play in family? The almighty controls everything. The Almighty controls everything in this world and controls you. You have no control of nothing in this life. I never think of myself controlling my life. I never control my life. The way I am is from the Almighty, see? And if you could just live your life by doing the right thing for your family with the right intention, it doesn't matter what you do. Just do it from the heart. You understand? It's, it's, you know, the main thing is what you feel in you. And if it's good or bad as far as someone else, it doesn't matter. It's what you feel that matters. You know, if you feel goodness, that's what it is, you know? Yeah, that's how I look at it. What does it mean to be a good father? A good father is mean, be there for your kids 100%, you know. Give your kids whatever it needs to be better than you, you know. The bottom line, you gotta, we're a mirror of our kids, so whatever we do, our kids will do. You gotta work hard as far as a, a father is, because your kids gotta see you work. So we gotta work to, to build a strong family. You can't be lazy. You know, you get up every day and you do something, anything, for the right reason. That's going to benefit you and your family. You know, that's being a, a good father, you know, to be there all the time for your kids. You know, you don't just, like some people, you know, you have a job, you work, you go home. You don't go home. Some people go hang out with their friends or associates and they have their family at home. You gotta be there for your family all the time. Watch them grow, you know, watch them make mistakes. Keep them in line, Res teach them respect, discipline. That have a lot, you can't have your kids disrespecting the home, and this is what happened, you know? So that's basically the whole thing, you know, being a good father is be there all, all time for your kids, you know. That's how I, that's what I do for you guys. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see other fathers making with their families? Mistakes that I see with the father, the father does is that they, they're not there for the kid, they, um, they don't discipline their kids. That's, you gotta have rules. We all gotta have rules. If we don't discipline our kids and teach them respect for their family, which is the siblings, you know, mother, father, and brothers and sisters, if they don't respect their home, they will not respect anybody. So we did to discipline them so we don't have to have the government discipline them. And if we don't discipline our kid, the government will discipline the kid. Anybody in here want the government to discipline their kid? I don't think so. So, but if you discipline your kids for them to respect others, they'll have a better life. You know, that means a lot. You know? I know on your part and my kids' part, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about my family, I gotta talk about my family because that's all I know. And I do whatever I have to do to make my kids smart, strong mentally and physically. Your kids gotta be strong mentally and physically in this life. And the only way you're gonna do that is by you showing them and they're giving you respect. 
You know, a lot of parents, the kids don't respect them. How can you have a kid talking to their parents like they're talking to one of their friends? That's not good. How's this kid going to grow up to be? Respect no one. They get themselves in a lot of trouble. You know? So that's basically how I feel. You know? Respect have a lot to do with it. You know? What about the relationship between the mother and the father? And how important is that in the family? That's very important relationship. Because kids, we are a mirror for our kids. And if our kids see us respect, disrespecting my wife or my wife disrespecting me, that's not good. Then the kids are going to start disrespecting the mother. So it's very important to have respect for your spouse, whoever it is. You know, if you're married or not, some people, they're not married. So I'll say, you know, partner, you know. So that's very important. You know. How does one find a good wife? And what, and what does that mean to be a good wife? Good wife is very difficult. It's a chance in life. But to find a good wife is, again, everything is taught with respect and love. And um, we all have issues and faults. We're not perfect. And it's mainly understanding. So from the outbreak of a relationship, we got to come clean with each other. You got to say, well, look, this is who I am. I'm not someone else. This is Edmund. You accept me the way I am. And who you are, I got to accept, accept you for who you are. I got to make adjustment with your fault because we all have faults. We're not perfect. I can't look at your faults and say you're a pain in the ass. You can't do that. You got to respect each one's fault and make your adjustment. And then it becomes natural after a while. You don't even see the faults no more. Because we accept each other's. And then after that, it becomes love. You just start loving each other's because I love you for who you are. Not for someone else, a fantasy. I'm not going to pick it on you because you snore at night. Maybe I talk in my sleep at night. Some people, they can't deal with stuff like that. They want to make that adjustment. That's why some relationships, some people sleep in different beds. I don't want to sleep in different beds than my wife. You know? So we have to make a lot of adjustments if you want to have a good relationship. What are you looking for? Sex? Is that a relationship? You know? What are you looking for? Perfect woman? There's no such thing as perfect. So let's make adjustment to each other's. It's just at your workplace. If you work in a place, you've got to make adjustments. So it's all about adjustment. And that's the only way you're going to have a good relationship and a good wife, a good partner. Make adjustment. And then everything just becomes Normal. You're not force, I'm not forcing you to love me. You can't force anything in this life. There's no such thing as me making you love me because I buy you a beautiful outfit or I buy you the best uh, car on earth or whatever. That's buying you stuff. You're going to love me and respect me. We respect each other and make adjustment in our life. And, you know, respect comes after you know, as life goes on. That's how I look at it. It works for me. I don't, look, 
everybody got to um, try to make people love them. I don't try to make anybody love me. You love me for who I am, and, um, and that's the way it's got to be. Or it's, if you force it, it's not going to work. So I think that's about the best way you can have a relationship. Just leave it alone. Let it grow. Mm -hmm. you know? Because it's change. We, as we get older, we change. We're not the same person anymore. We could change for better or worse, but it's always better. You know? What are some of the biggest mistakes you see men wow. making when they choose a woman? That's another thing. They're looking for perfect woman. They, they're looking for beauty they, with the eyes. This woman has to be a certain look. But it's not the look. It's inside. It's what you have inside that matters. It's not how you look. You got to love yourself no matter what. You look in the mirror. You look at yourself, and I love you. I love me. You know what I'm saying? And men and women, they want to find this guy, tall guy, good-looking guy, have a lot of money. That's what people are looking for. Instead of looking from inside, the heart of the man, the heart of the woman, that's what you got to look for, the goodness. You know? I want somebody that's going to care for me. My wife's going to look out for me, Cook me good meal. Make sure I'm okay. Make sure I'm f everything is beautiful with me. I want someone that's going to do that. I don't want somebody that's going to look out for themselves and don't care about me or don't care about what I can give them. And that's the problem. It's all you got to look from the inside, the goodness of a person's heart. I don't need a beautiful woman and got a bad heart and don't care about me or my family, or my kids. I don't want that. I want someone to have a beautiful from the inside. And it in, inside shows the outside. That's the whole thing when it comes to, you know, woman or anything, any kind of relationship. People just looking for the wrong reason, you know. Things, what they see. I don't look for that. I look for you as a person. What you have inside of you matters to me. It's not what you look. It's to me you're beautiful no matter what. What's beauty anyway? I understand what beauty means. Your eyes are beautiful. Your hair is beautiful. Your body is beautiful. What is it? It's just what you see. It's what you feel. You know? So that's how you what, are, look at what it. are some of the indicators of a woman with a good heart? What lets you know that she's a good woman? Well, a good woman is gonna it's very easy it's just like uh uh how you doing, make sure you have a good meal, make sure your clothes are taken care of, make sure your kids are taken care of. You know, respect you. That's a good person, you know. Not somebody that worrying how they look or what they want. It's looking to see what my husband needs or wants. You know, well, mainly need. You know, my husband needs to be nurtured. And in return, you're going to do the same thing. You know, it's like action reaction. You do good for me, I do it for you. If I if you do bad for me, why would I want to do good for you? You know what I'm saying? And to me, that's a lot of mistake that people make. You know. When I was younger, you used to say you don't need a useless bitch. Well, I don't. You don't need a useless woman. I mean, I'm, you know, when I say a useless woman, a woman doesn't like you said doesn't care for you. Doesn't do, want to do anything. They just want to sit around and look pretty or whatever it is. And let's put it this way. I'm not just talking about women. I'm talking men. 
A woman need a strong man, and a man need a strong woman. And we work together as a team. We're partners. If I'm doing all the work, and you don't want to work, then I don't need you, and vice versa. If my wife comes home and does everything, take care of my kids, take care of my home, do everything nice to me, and I'm being a fool and I don't want to do nothing, I just want to lay around all day and drink beers and watch TV, she don't need me. Yeah. Get rid of my ass. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. You know? If I have a woman, I come home, my kids are running around with shit on their ass, the, bump, the pumpers are not changed, they're smelly all over the place, the place is a mess. What she does all, do all day home, worry about herself, her hair looks and shit. Of course, she, I walk in the door, she's like, beautiful. <coughs> hair all done, nails all done, pretty. But what's all this stuff? That's more important to me than the way you look right now. Men, they worry about their fancy cars and stuff. They don't care about the family, right? That she needs you? No. So it's a two-way street, guys. It's just work together. That's all we got to do here. You know, we got to find a woman that's going to work with you. And if she doesn't work with you, then you don't need her. And you got to look at it the same way. You got to do right for your woman. And in return, you're going to get right, right just back. And if, like I say, if it doesn't work, then it's, it just doesn't work. You got to get rid of it. Yeah. What's most important in raising children? Oh, important in raising children? There's a lot of stuff that's important. And so discipline is one, for sure. Uh, responsibility, you got to give your kids responsibility. And you, as a parent, you're an example of your kids. So whatever you do, your kids will do. If you get up every day, work hard, your kid will see you a hard-working man. You take care of your family, you come home, help out with the kids, with their homework. You gotta be there for your kids, every day. That's very important. You know, a family is work. And unless you're willing to work to keep a family together, then you don't need to have a family. If you're lazy and selfish, then don't have a family. It's not for you. You got to be willing to get up every day and work. Work out the house, work in the house. There's unlimited work when you have a family. Unlimited until you die. I have a family right now and I still work for my family. Because now I have grandkids. You know? I want my grandkids to be strong. I want them to see their parents are strong, their grandparents are strong. So those kids, the next generations, will be even stronger. So it's very important for you guys to get up every day, work towards your family and relationship. And your kids will see that. Your energy, they will feel your energy. Discipline is a big deal. Responsibility. Respect. It means a lot. You know? This man respect me right now. And always respect me. All my kids respect me. Because I show them respect and I show them what it takes to be strong. You can't be weak to your kids. You gotta have tough love. Everybody wants the kid to be happy. You understand? 
I want my kid to be happy. But you can't be happy all the time. And you're not going to be happy because you got to follow my rules. So I'm going to make you very uncomfortable if you don't follow my rules. Because you're already making me uncomfortable because you're not following my rules. And respect. So if you don't do that for your kids, what do you think is going to happen? They're not going to be strong. You know, people, the kids start crying and acting up. Right away, they become weak. Oh, here. Yeah. Kids stop crying. He's happy. No. I say you're not going to have that. Tough love. Tough love, brothers. That's very important. It hurts my heart. It hurts. It's painful to see your kids suffer. You know, so right away you want to become weak. No, you got to stay strong. So that kid will become strong. My dad was strong. He didn't give in on me. I didn't weaken him. So what, in return, that's what he's going to do. So that's important. Very important. You know. I remember when I was a kid, you used to say, I'm just going to be the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. Yeah. I don't care yeah. if you hate me. I don't care. Which, he hates me. I know he hates me. I know my kid doesn't like me. I don't care. <laughs> Do what the hell I say. You're going to keep your grades up? You're going to do your chores, your responsibility? And if you don't, it's consequence. I don't want you to love me. I don't want you, I don't care about love right now from you because I have the love for you. I'm doing this because I love you. The right intention. Whatever you do for your family, do it with the right intention. That's what it's all about. I'm not doing what I'm doing because I hate you. I do it because I love you. I'm trying to make a strong man out of you, a strong woman. It's not only a strong man. You got, if you have daughters, you got to make them strong. I have a daughter, and she's strong. I make a strong family. I want a strong family. Why would I want a weak family? But if I don't show my strength to my family, how are they going to be strong? I got to let them know that I am the king of my house. You understand? I control my home. Not you. And that's how you have to let your kid understand. So they will become a king. And in return, if you have a weak woman, she'll become strong. You're going to make him strong. And you want, a, you want a strong woman, right? So it's all you. Start from you, man. OK? So just be tough, love to your kids. I'm not telling you to go abuse your kids then, but you got to be there for your kids. 100%. 100% focus for your family. That's what I do. I get mad when people don't take care of their family. I have no respect for anyone that doesn't take care of their family. You understand? That breaks my heart. Because you know why? One day you will know that you fucked up. And then you're going to blame the kid. 
People blame everybody for everything. They never blame themselves. He's a bad kid. There's no such thing as a bad kid, okay? No bad kid. You made them bad. Because you're not there for them. Kids will do things that are not right, or maybe you call not right. They'll make mistakes. They're little kids. They're learning shit. But you are the adult. You brought them in this life, so you have to guide them. They go one way, and you know it's not right. They're going to hurt themselves. Put them back on track, whatever it takes. Don't ignore it. So, hey, boy, I tell you right now, family, kids, that's a big deal. It's not a game. It's not just having kids because, oh, it's funny. Nah. So that's tough. You know, mm -hmm. you got to be tough. So if anyone have kids in here, I mean, there's a lot of broken homes. I understand that. And because it's broken homes, it's a lot of excuse, you know. And that's not a problem because you have a kid and you have a broken home. You figure, oh, it's not my fault. It's my partner's fault. He's raising the kid. She's raising the kid or whatever it is. She, she make the kid that way. No, 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 no. It's not your partner or whoever you had, woman or whatever you have your kids. It's you. Because even though you and your partner is not together, that doesn't mean you can't be a good father. You understand? Know you can still make a man out of him. Because you could be there for him. The same way you think or know when you are together with your partner, living together with your family, you can be the same way not being together with your spouse and with your kid. You could see your kid every day, just like you're living with at home. Spend time with that kid. Don't just, here, the government say, give you $200 a week for my kid, and, and then you're OK. You say that my troubles are over. No, 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 no. You can be there every day. Pick your kid up from school. Go to his house, wherever it is. Make it your business. Don't go have another kid someplace for somebody else. It doesn't work out, go have another kid. Then you have these kids all the place. They lost track of your goddamn kids. Who's taking care of those kids? You know? So that's, that's another big deal. So there's a lot of things that's happening right now that it's not good. And there's no one to be blamed but you. So you have to think about that. So I'm sure there's people in here that have a family together. I don't know. And this family is broken. But still be there for your kid. Don't say, oh, I can't pick up Johnny today because I got to go someplace. I got to go hang out with my friends. So Johnny's waiting for you. Oh, my dad didn't come pick me up. How that kid feels? He's not going to be a strong kid. He's going to be weak because he's sad. Respect yourself. So when your kids see my dad, they say, whoa, that's my dad. You know what I'm saying? I want to be proud of my dad. I want to go to school, pick my kid up, and my kids say, well, all her friends. Oh, that's Jenny's dad. Guy looks respectable. He don't walk in there looking bad, no respect for himself. His clothes look like shit. You don't have to be that way. Don't, I'm not judging anybody, but if you work, you'll be okay. You understand? 
If you're going to have two jobs, three jobs, I don't care. You make a choice to have your family, you got to do what it takes to make that family righteous. So you go to school, you're looking like shit. You know, jacked up teeth, raggedy clothes, but this is Johnny's dad. Everybody look at this Johnny's dad. You think Johnny feels good about himself? To know that's my dad? That kid is embarrassed. Make yourself respectable. Keep your head up strong. So this kid says, well, I'm proud, that's my dad. Not some dirt bag. You don't have to make yourself that way. Nobody has to make themselves that way. Don't blame no one else but yourself. Respect your goddamn self. You know? That's how I feel. There anybody else, anyone in here that can't make themselves respected for their family that you love? If you love your family, you'll respect yourself first. Do you respect yourself, sir? Good. So do you want your kid to respect you? You're not going to go to your school, uh, kid's school looking like a bum, right? Yeah. That'll make your kid sad. So we can all do that, man. But yet, the problem is you're driving a fucking Mercedes outside for $80,000. Or you have all these glitters, things. Material stuff, that means shit. That's my most annoying shit. I don't like it. You know? It makes me want to cry. I'm sad. Why? I don't like it. It's just tired. Why people gotta be that way? <laughs> Can't you be happy with yourself? You know what it takes to be happy? Take care of your fucking family. You understand me? Well, that's my problem. But why it's my problem because I love kids. They're innocent. They're at your fucking mercy. So why can't you do the right thing for your own fucking family? Huh? But yet you can turn around and tell me you fucking love me. You love me. You're my friend. I ain't got no fucking friend if you can't take care of your goddamn kids. If you can't love your kids, how the fuck can you love me? Do you understand me? That's my problem. Don't tell me you love me, all right? Take care of your family first. No excuse. So hey guys, that's where I come from, man. I will die for my family. You people say you do the same thing, right? Well then, just do it. Just do it, my friend. It's a beautiful thing. Family is beautiful. I got four strong, mentally and physically kid. And I got eight grandkids. And they all tattooed my fucking arm here. So kill me. But don't fuck with my family. All right? So you all have to feel the same way. Love. Powerful. Love is strong. So if you love your kids, you'll do anything. Don't blame anyone. Blame your fucking self, okay? That's how I feel. I didn't want to roll myself up. I started to slow away. But I got to do it. Because it's me. 
If anybody any fucking question to ask me, just ask me anything about life. I could tell you anything you want to fucking know. Life is simple. We make it difficult. Because all we're looking at material shit. That's the problem. And the bottom line, that means nothing. Family is what you need. Love. I gotta love my fucking son right now. See, he's fucking love. That's what I'm talking about. Not bullshit. So guys, I know you guys can do it, man. And I tell you, it's a big reward. Big reward, man. Bottom line, work fucking hard with everything. Relationship is work. That's what I do. I'm 68 years fucking old and I still work. And I work until I die. And I'm going to get fucking laid until I die. Do you understand? Because that's what makes you strong. Love. I don't want to be 50 years old, 45 years old, but I feel like a fucking old man. Why? You don't have to be that way. You don't have to be that way, guys. It takes a lot of work, but man, <laughs> it's so beautiful. I have my grandkids coming over every Saturdays. I watch them run around, wreck my fucking house. <laughs> I don't care. Don't touch that. Don't break that for grandmas. I don't care about shit. They do whatever they want. They're happy. But again, people worry about things. I don't care about things. I care about family. Yeah, that's big, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't pay me too much mind, guys, because I could get off the wall. You might think I'm fucking nuts, but I am nuts. So, ask me something, man. What do you want to know? Does anybody have any question for my crazy father? <laughs> Whatever you want to know. He, he's like, yo, Edmund. <laughs> because, you know. We got someone right here. Yeah. Kind of open-ended, it's not super specific. What do you do when you feel the way you feel and the family you came from is completely the opposite? Opposite? Meaning, like, they don't give a shit. They don't take care of themselves, they don't take care of each other, they can fucking shit on me for having the morals you have. Well, family, uh, you talking brothers, sisters? My parents, my sister's family. Well, if, right now, uh, you got family owned? No. Okay. I was married. Good, uh, but you plan to have family, right? I'd like to. Well, well, see, the way it is, right? I got seven brothers, three sisters. I'm from a big family. I can't control anyone. I can't even control myself sometimes. The Almighty controls me. So I can't put my energy into my brothers and sisters. I have brothers and sisters that's, that's, that's really fuck ups. But I can't put my energy in them. Because that's not my responsibility. I didn't create that. But I create him. He's my responsibility. I make sure he's righteous. I can't make sure my brother and my sister's righteous. Let it be, brother. Leave him alone. If you can't deal with them, walk away. Because if they're not doing righteous, that's negative. Negative. I don't want negative. I don't deal with negative. Positive. Just be where it is positive. 
you know. It's just like if you don't, you don't want to be around stupid people too. When I say stupid people, people that's, that doesn't want to help themselves. You want to be around people that's smart, intelligent, so one day you become intelligent, right? You be around somebody that's like dumb, stupid, you know, I'm not allowed to say the word, but I got to say it. Because it's true, right? What do you call it then? Don't want to do something? I, I don't know a nice word, but you have a nice word? I ain't got no fucking nice word because I'll tell you just what it is. You're fucking stupid. You're dumb. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? That's the only way I can put it. You know? So I don't want to be around those people. I stay away from those people. So because I want to be stronger and make my family stronger. So any question? Any other question? I'm just trying to see if anybody put their hands up and I'll pass them a mic. Well, I think we should bring it full circle, my man. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot more, guys, about life. A lot more about life. I got a lot of stories. Beyond. Because a lot of shit went down in my life. Raising families is one of it. I got a lot of stories about him. Got a lot of stories about my Son in the back there, I got story, man, I got stories forever. Good stories, though. Positive story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, you want to close the shit down? Close it down, brother. You know, I think it would be interesting. I mean, we still have seven minutes. Oh, okay. Maybe talk a little bit about your childhood growing up in Belize and what was that like and how that shaped your way. My life, free. I like to be free. I don't want anybody to fuck with me. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do, how I want to do. I don't like to be controlled. Fucking king don't want to be controlled, right? You like to be controlled? Who the fuck wants to be controlled? I don't want anybody to control me. I get up in the morning, you want to do something, I want to do it. And was that like, that's what it was like when you were a kid? When I was a kid, that's what I do. You know? Let's put it this way. I learned shit on my own. I didn't have a dad that was, my dad loved me, I know my dad loved me. But he was never wrong because he was always out working to provide. I might have seven kids, seven boys and three girls. Hey, she have her fucking hands full. She can't handle us. Who's gonna handle it? A crazy guy like me? Nah. So I always do what I want to do, how I want to do. I'm learning my own. I don't have somebody sit my ass down and teach me shit. I gotta figure my life out. That's how I was brought up. Figuring shit out, just like you guys. You gotta figure your life out. You don't need anybody to tell you what, I mean, it's good to have structures, just like I structure my kids. It's nice. But mainly you have to figure things out for yourself. You know, but it's good to have a guide. Well, I didn't have that. You know, I didn't go to school and have all these stuff that you guys had, you know. I go to school when I feel like. I don't like school anyway. Boring. Why am I gonna go there? Yeah, I don't wanna learn that shit. What do I need that for? I wanna go out and do things. Climb a fucking tree, run around, chase a fucking duck, do anything. Nice stuff, happy stuff. So that's what I do when I was a kid. You know? When I'm hungry, I eat what I want. I'm hungry today. I see fruit or whatever it is. That's the kind of life I had. It's a good life. I like it. And I came here, and there's so many bullshit that <laughs> took me a while to figure out things, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but again, I figured it out. You know, it was a different kind of jungle. You know, buildings all look the same to me. So it's a lot of different things, guys. And, uh, 
that's the kind of life I had, bro, you know. Was, but I have no complaints. I could complain about a lot of shit. I could say, hey, you know, I didn't have this. I have mosquitoes eating my ass up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys have no AC, you know. I go to sleep at night. I got mosquitoes blowing my fucking ear, just buzzing in my ear. And I'm sweating my ass off. So you know what I do, brother, to sleep? Mentally, meditation. Bunk my mind. I don't hear no fucking mosquitoes. No mosquitoes ain't biting me. I ain't hot. You make adjustment. Huh? You want to live like that? Nobody wants to live like that. <laughs> but that's, it's a good, I mean, you know, I get used to it. And it made me stronger. Because now, if I want to lay right down there and sleep, I can sleep right there. It's all in the mind. Control the mind. The mind, you sit right there, you just blank your fucking mind. You don't exist. That takes practice. But if you practice it, one day you'll be able to do it. It's a good thing. Try to practice that. Shut down your entire brain. That's a good practice, guys. So that's what I do. And I do that today. That's the reason why I don't let anything bother me. Another thing, guys, gotta remember one thing here in this life right here. You know, stop worrying about shit. There's nothing to worry about in this life. Nothing. Because you have no control of nothing. You think you got control. Everybody, I got control. I'm smart because I drive in a Mercedes. I'm smart because I got a big house. You ain't no smarter than me. You smart, every fucking one of you guys here is smart. And I am smart too. We're all smart in our own way. So you're not better than me and I'm not better than you. Not because you have more, more things. You think you're smarter than me? You can't even run your own family home. Who are you going to be smarter than me? Right? So, that's how I look at it. So, we've got one minute, and I, I was hoping maybe for that last minute you could share what your hope is for all of the fathers in this room and maybe all the fathers in the world. What do you hope to see well, and wish for us all? Well, I hope that every father and everyone to build a strong family. All you have is your family, my friend. You don't have friends. Do you understand? You have associates, co-workers, peers, whatever you want to call them. Your family is your friend, man. Your family will be there for you. You know what I'm saying? You do the right thing for your family, they'll be there for you. You're going to get old. I'm getting old. And I hope that I never need my family to clean my ass. But if I do need my family to clean my ass, I know they will. And that's a good feeling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you don't do the right thing for your family, believe me, you'll pay. You could pay today, you could pay tomorrow, but the bottom line, you will pay. You know? I have my daughter that's a hospice nurse. Because every one of my kids are very successful because I'm pursued. So she's a hospice nurse. She told me stories about guys or family that never do anything for their family. She can tell. And the people that do good for their family, she can tell. On their dying bed, family is there with love, because all they know is love from their family. And the one that didn't give the love, just don't have no love. So that's, do you want that to happen to you? Would you like that to happen to you? Have no love when you're dying in bed? No, nobody wants that. But if you don't give the love now to your family, that's what's going to happen to you. And you and every one of us. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
No problem, guys. Edmund Hulse. Yeah. Make it happen. Make it happen. You guys are beautiful. What he represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father.